السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله شرعنا محمد رسول الله شرعنا محمد رسول الله حيا الصلاة حيا الصلاة حيا الفلا حيا الفلا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحدي الله فلا مدل له من يدلل فلا هادي له أشر لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشر أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق توقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثير ونساء اتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرهام إن الله كان لكم رخيبا يا الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم عمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد ان سك حديث كتاب الله عز وجل احسن هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر امور محدثاتها وكل محدثه في الاسلام بدع وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار صلى الله عليه وسلم all praise due to Allah we praise him and we extol him. We send the finest salutations on Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Read the most truthful of speeches of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the finest guidance that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the most evil of affairs and the newly invented ones, bid'ah. And every bid'ah is a going astray. And every going astray leads to the hell fire. I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah. And I publicly bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a servant and final messenger. I'm about today, my dear brother and man, I would like to be starting a series of khutbas regarding some of the signs of the last day. Like Tawfiq, Alhamdulillah, I mean this series is coming by way of request of some well-intended brothers. Zam la khair, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Bless them for their concern for our community. Amin. They have requested of me that I enlighten our jama'ah, our community, of these events because it seems that some of us are aware of what's going on but yet don't understand that these things that are happening must take place. These things that are occurring in and around our communities, in and around the world, are events, are happenings that must occur for Qiyamah to commence. Alhamdulillah, it's a pleasure for me to be approached and to be approached by more than one well-intended brother to enlighten us on these events. Because some of us are witnessing these events but do not understand 
that these things are part of Allah's plan, a part of Allah's qudwa, a part and parcel of Allah's qadr, a part of his plan in action that we as believers should be aware of. But ma'asib shadeed, I'm very sorry to say that, many have noticed that we are living in a bubble of sorts that we are unaware of what's happening and that these things are happening and they must take place as a part of the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as Allah says inna fi dhalik la ayatin lil mutmasimin that these things that are unfolding or unraveling are signs for those who take them as such, for those who are aware, who see the mark, who see the signs in what's taking place. They don't just watch them as forms of entertainment, but they're aware that these are signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen our iman. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, but many things are taking place. And for whatever reason, we have become ghafla, negligent at these events for many reasons. But I want to narrow them down to at least one of two reasons. Number one is that we are falling into a slumber. We are falling into a slumber in our own individual bubbles of our everyday lives and routines. So we are now in our own routine, functioning bubbles, that we are in a state of ghafla, negligence to everything else that's taking place around the world. We watch events as entertainment or to be informed. That's number one. Number two is that, Ma'asif Shadid, I'm sorry to say, that majority of, the overwhelming majority of us have a lack of correct knowledge of the aqeedah and manhaj of the salaf to understand that these things that are taking place are a part and parcel of our aqeedah, our aqaid, that we must know, we must understand, and have a firm grasp of. So these are the two main reasons why things are happening, but yet we are in a state of ghafla, negligence, or we do not have the correct knowledge of these things. And alhamdulillah, I mean, for being guided to the sunnah of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, thum alhamdulillah. We have to praise and thank Allah. If we have been one of those who were guided to a love of the sunnah, mutahira, the pure sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if we are yet to be guided to the sunnah, then I want to advise us of the noble statement of Imam Malik, the Imam of Dar Hijra. He said, bringing the analogy that as man raqib qad najah, that the Sunnah is like the Ark of Noah. Whosoever embarks on the Sunnah, then they have succeeded. They will be safe. Man lam yaqab, huwa lam yinjah. He will be destroyed. Whoever does not embark on the Sunnah, then they will be destroyed. They will drown. Well, alhamdulillah, I mean, there are no two ways about it. Those of us who appreciate the fact that we are Muslim and we want to dig in a little deeper to understand and appreciate the guidance of Irshad, of being guided to the Sunnah. Alhamdulillah, I mean, Allah has said, Man that whosoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided, then they are on the right guidance. And whosoever Allah allows to go astray, then they will never ever find anyone to guide them to the correct path. So this guidance, it's something which comes from within, that we want to be guided. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send us the right guidance. We cannot just take for granted that Many of us were born into Islam. There's a lot more pieces to the puzzle than just saying the kalima shahada. 
There is a thing called Iman. And there are pillars of our Iman. There's a thing called Islam. And there are pillars in our canal, Iman and Islam. So Alhamdulillah, I mean, when we look at the word, Huda, guidance, it's something that represents a physical guiding. When, a per, when Allah just sends a person to us, the guidance of Irshad, when Allah just sends someone to us to take us physically by a hand and guide us and show us the right path. It also means that we are getting an explanation and clarity on the right path towards the truth. Well, alhamd. Alhamdulillah, brother, I mean, for the guidance of the Quran and authentic Sunnah. We have to thank and praise Allah for that. And we have to thank and praise Allah by being eager to want to know what is the truth. It's very sad to say that many of us, although we are guided to the kalima tawheed, to kalima la ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah, we are seeking out these conspiracy theorists or these mystified philosophers online to tell us about the events that are unfolding in the world. With that said, my dear Salam Niman, the first sign of the coming of the hour was the advent of Muhammad Sallallahu being sent as a prophet. When he Sallallahu was sent as a prophet and messenger to this world, that is the first sign, as he Sallallahu has stated, authentic hadith, he had him coming to this world and the sa'a are like this, and he put his two fingers together. That's how close the advent of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Sa'a. And he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has stated that the Sa'a, the coming of the hour, will be coming like one who has beads, and they are broken, and they will fall one after the other so quickly. And those of us who are studious and are eager to learn and know about the signs of the hour, then there is no other place that we should look to other than the Quran authentic Sunnah. For example, when we look in the Sahih of Imam Muslim, he has a chapter in his book, Imam Muslim. This book, for those of us who are studious enough to understand, that this is the most authentic book on the planet Earth after the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has a chapter in his book titled Kitab of Fitin wa Ashrat al a title chaptered The Book of Turmoil and Tribulation and the Signs of the Last Day. These are all authentic narrations, authentically collected narrations for our benefit. Well, alhamd. As we mentioned, that the Sunnah is like the Safina to Noah, is like the Ark of Noah, and there's no other place that we should look towards than the authentic books of a hadith. There are many signs, too many to mention. There are many signs that have already passed. Ibn Kathir has a book titled The Signs of the Last Day, and he has collected many signs that will take place during the last period of this earth. We need to read these books and find out what's happening. We don't have to look at those conspiracy theorists or those fear mongers. La. We need to feel rest assured that we are people of Iman and faith. That these things have already been prophesied by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi have already mentioned these things. So there's nothing for us to worry about. We need to rest assured that we are people of Iman and faith. So when we see them, we say, Salaqa Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Walladhi nafsi biyadi, the one who holds the soul of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his hand. He said that a time would come when you would see excessive killing in the world. So much so that the murderer, the one who killed, would not know why they killed. And the one who was murdered would not know why they were murdered. We're also witnessing so many other signs, and there are many narrations for these signs. For example, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has stated, leading up to the last day, 
there will be signs. For example, sexual promiscuity will be rampant. You will see that there will be 50 women to one man. You will see the increase of the number of women compared to man to the point that there will be 50 women to one man on the earth. He said that, the Messiah of Allah, he said that another one of the signs is that you'll find that children will be disobedient to their parents. You will see women clothed, wearing clothes, yet they will be naked. You'll see women walking around wearing clothes, but yet they will be naked on the streets. You'll see some of the signs which are Asharatul Sal Sukhra, the smaller or lesser signs. For example, we will see the disobedience. We will see the advent of Isa ibn Maryam. These are one of the greater signs. Isa ibn Maryam would come down to this earth. The Prophet also mentioned that Gog and Magog, Juj with my Juj, they will be let loose on this earth. The Masih the Jal, he will also be let loose on this earth. And these are things that we need to understand with knowledge. That these are issues that are pertaining to our Iman. That the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophets before him had mentioned it so that we would be knowledgeable and we would be aware of the signs that are leading up until the last day. So Alhamdulillah, I mean, when we look at the authentic narrations in the Quran and in the Sunnah, then we will not be taken aback will not be shocked by what we hear, what we see that is taking place in the world today. Because these are all part and parcel of our aqidah and our manhaj. We don't want to lose touch with reality. So we need to read and study with wanting to learn and to understand with a deeper understanding of the proper aqidah. Well, alhamd. So, what I will be mentioning and speaking about more specifically today is what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi has stated is the Dabbat al Arab. That there will be a creature, a beast, that will emerge near to the last day. This is a unique creature that has been authentically mentioned in the Quran. And on the tongue of Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that close to the Akhir Zaman, close to the last day, there will be a beast that will emerge from the earth. As Allah says in his book, in Surah Namal, ayat number 82. When the word has become established or fulfilled against them, we shall bring out from the earth a beast for them to speak to them. That is because mankind did not have real faith in our signs. In the tafsir of Imam Ibn Kathir, he said that this beast will appear close to the Akhir Zaman. This beast will appear close to the last days of this earth when corruption has become widespread and kuf where people they just say they don't believe in God when evil has become prevalent on this earth and the commands of Allah are blatantly disregarded and distorted Allah Akbar and we see that the people of Bidah and hera, innovations, and having vain desires have become prevalent on this earth. And we see and we understand that the people of the Sunnah are becoming very few on this earth. May Allah make us of the people of the Sunnah. And we see that people are now belittling the Sunnah. These are some of the signs that Akhir Zaman is drawing very near. When people are advising others of what is correct and what is the right way of understanding the deen according to Quran authentic sunnah according to the manhaj of the Salaf and the Salih they say this is only sunnah 
I have a way. I have my madhab, and you have your way. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. We understand from the people of the past, the people of the Sunnah, which is Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi, and Malik, all of those people, they say, the sahih al hadith wa madhabi. If the hadith is sahih, authentic, that's my madhab, that's my way. But now, we say silly things like, are you a mujaddid? Are you a scholar? Are you a sheikh? This is, I have a method. You have your way. We are all people of the Ummah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We shouldn't have these difference by saying that, no, you follow a different madhab than I follow. Because the madhab are all coming from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's lips. We have to believe in Allah and His Rasul. Why are we splitting hairs in the deen? So when we see these types of frivolous disputes, then we have to understand that the Akhir Zaman is drawing near. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help all of us and make us people who who hear the truth and follow the best thereof. Amin, amin, amin. Let me close our khutbah today with some authentic narrations regarding this Dabbat al Ard, regarding this beast of the earth. And all of these narrations can be found in the Sahih of Imam Muslim in the book titled Kitab al Fitin. Well, Ashrat al the book of turmoil, problems, and the signs before the last hour. Abu Rabbi Anhu reported that the Prophet Sallallahu he said, Badru bi amal sitta. He said, be in a haste and hurry to do good deeds before six things occur or appear on this earth. He said, التجال والدقان والدابة الأرض وتعلو شمس من مغربها وأمر عام وخصوم أحدكما أقم خالص صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said, be in a haste to do good deeds before six things happen, before six things appear on this earth. The dajjal, the the smoke, the beasts of the earth, the rising of the sun from the west, and general turmoil, problems in the world, and your demise before we die. Abu Rabbi who reported also in Sahih Imam Muslim, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, when three things appear, la yinfa'u imana lam yinunu imanuha bil qabl. No benefit, when three things happen, when three things appear, no benefit will a person's faith do for them if they did not believe before witnessing these three things. أَتَلَوْ شَمْسُ الْمَغْرِبِهَا الدَّجَالِ وَالدَّابَةِ الْأَرْضِ اُقْمَ مَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم. When you see the sun rising from the west, when you see the sun rising from the west, when you see or you hear about a Masih al-Dajjal and the beast from the earth, a brother who reported that, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, if you see the sun rising from the west and you repent before that, then Allah will accept your repentance. If you see the sun rising from the west and you have not repented before that, then Allah will not accept your repentance. Now is our time. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, he had reported in his book, Fat al that the wisdom behind the Dabat al Ard, the wisdom behind the beast of the earth being let loose close to the last days, meaning when the sun rises from the west, is because at that time the door of Toba, of repentance, will be closed, will be locked. So if we want to make Toba, now is our time. Now is our chance. Because we know from the authentic hadith of the Messenger of Allah behind the wisdom of Jum'ah is that 
the days and the nights started on a Friday, and the days and the night in the Akhir Zaman will be also on a Friday. So we have to understand from the narration, authentic narrations that the last day will be on a Friday. So we should make more dua, more istighfar, more asking of forgiveness on Yom al Also, there's a narration in Ibn Majah who reported that the Prophet Wasallam said that the beast of the earth will emerge and will have with it the staff, the asa of Musa and the ring of Suleiman. And he will use his staff, and he will stamp every believer by saying that he is a mu'min, and he will strike the face of every disbeliever, and he will say that this is a monarch, or this is a kafir. So much so that we will be meeting and speaking to each other, and sitting and eating with each other, by addressing each other as, ya mu'min or ya kafir. La hawla wa la quota illa billah. And as Ibn Kathir mentions in his tafsir of the ayah, that the beast will be saying as he is branding the believers between their eyes as mu'minin and the kufar by striking their face as kufar, he will be saying, Anna nas ayatina la That verily, that the people, they did not have any real faith in my signs. While he is branding the people and marking the people, the beast will say these things. Let us study the aqidah of the salaf. Let us study the correct aqidah and stop listening to these policies online and listening to these emotional rants. La, we believe in Allah and His Rasul. And we have authentic narrations to consolidate our belief. And make our iman strong. And we have strong iman and belief without a doubt, with yaqeen, that these things that a dajjal, a masih dajjal, Isa bin Maryam mawjood, in the second heaven, a masih dajjal mawjood, on an island, a dabat al ark mawjood, he is here today, right now, as I stand and I speak. And Allah, azawajal, by his qudwa, by his power and his might, and at the time when the sun rises from where it sets, can be any day. It's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell this beast to do its job. And as it says, said in the hadith of Ibn Majah, whether we're ready for it or not, the beast will come up from the earth and it will dust the dirt off of its head and its body. And people will try to run away from this beast. But there isn't any way to run. Now is our time, my dear Salam Iman. For us to run, run to our iman, run within ourselves to our iman, and know that we have firm yaqeen in these things. Look and read the kitab of Fitin and the Sahib Imam Muslim and Ashrat al Sa'ah. Then you will understand that this is not a plaything, this is reality that the Prophet was informing us of to prepare us, not to frighten us, but to prepare us. And the only thing that will save us is our iman with yaqeen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our families. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that real iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that love of iman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the strength, the, the iman, coupled with the yaqeen, and give us a tawfiq to practice it. Ila yawmadin. Amin, amin, amin. In Allah, wa malaikum saluna na nabi. يا الذين آمنوا صل الله عليه وسلم هم صل الله محمد ولا إله محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم ولا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد ولا إله محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم ولا إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا عطني فتن حسنة وفخر بالقدر ونقوم صل